Oftentimes when you think of a Porsche, an iconic sports car like the 911 is something that's going to instantly come to mind. However, they really shocked the world with the introduction of their first ever SUV, the Cayenne, about 15 years ago, which they later followed up, followed up about 10 years later with the smaller Macan entry-level sport utility vehicle. So the big question I want answered since I've got this 2018 Porsche Macan Sport Edition, is the smallest and least expensive Porsche SUV in the lineup still actually worthy of that Porsche badge? That's what we're here to find out. So as the least expensive entry in the Porsche lineup here in North America, the Macan has some pretty big shoes to fill. In fact, this is the best-selling Porsche of all time here in America. The company moves roughly about 90,000 to 100,000 of these every year since the model came out back in 2015. Now, 2019 is actually when Porsche made some pretty significant changes. Unfortunately, I've got a 2018 model. However, with Porsche moving almost 90,000 of these, I figured I would show you guys this and then hopefully show you guys a refreshed 2019 model at a later, later date. Now, as you can see, this sport edition model kind of slots above the base Macan. Porsche offers this thing in base Macan, Macan S, GTS, Turbo, and then of course there's a Turbo performance package. So the base price spectrum of this vehicle really will range greatly depending on what your budget is and what your actual speed is. Now let's talk about the design of the Macan. Just like other Porsche vehicles, it has that traditional Porsche look to it. Remember, this is the car that rides on the MLB platform from Volkswagen Audi. So it's essentially an Audi Q5, and you wouldn't even guess that from looking at the front face. So you have these 911 inspired front front end with these headlights. Bi Xenon headlights are actually standard. LED daytime running lights are standard along with LED uh, turn signals down here at the lower fascia and then you have just a halogen fog light. Now if you guys don't really want the bi Xenon option, Porsche does offer a full LED option uh, which is like a $1,500 option. Remember with Porsche there's so many different option packages and whatnot and one thing I really appreciate all the grills that you see here are actually functional. It's a very clean and inoffensive design. There isn't really too much in here that's overwrought that's going to you know push you away with these gigantic grills. So it's overall a very clean front end look and if you guys look at the refreshed 2019 model, Porsche basically kept most of it the same while tweaking a few uh, smaller items here and there that really only the Porsche faith are going to notice. Now the same story is true when you look at the side profile of this SUV. Obviously it's riding on the Audi Q5 platform, but unlike the Q5, Porsche has made this thing about two inches lower and about an inch and a half wider. It's roughly the same length. Now I wanna first talk about the wheels. This Sport Edition model comes standard with these 20 inch wheels, which are like a $3,000 option if you guys try to spec it onto a base model. And basically with the Sport Edition, Porsche gives you the base Macan, but includes about um, $18,000 worth of option and it only charges you about $13,000 which I'll go over later on. Now these wheels definitely look great. The base Macan will have like an 18 inch wheel. You can also spec up to a 21 inch wheel. Uh, they're wrapped in two 65 tires in the front. They're also staggered in the back. They're a little bit wider. The brakes are among the largest in the segment. Keep in mind if you guys go for the really sport oriented trims you may have red painted brake calipers. You can also get carbon ceramic brakes in typical Porsche fashion which I imagine most of you probably won't be specking out your uh, Macan with carbon ceramic brakes. Now at a wheelbase of around 110 inches long and an overall length around 184 inches long this is kind of smack in the middle of the rest of the compact SUV segment. It's about an inch longer than the Audi Q5 in which this vehicle shares a platform with but it's about six inches shorter in the wheelbase than a Cayenne. They're larger SUV and about uh, three and a half inches uh, shorter in overall length. And surprisingly, the silhouette is somewhat traditional. Uh, if you guys look at the all-new 2020 Ford Escape, it almost seems like Ford has copied the Macan with its overall silhouette. I think it's going to age particularly well, just a little bit on the boring side. So just keep that in mind if you want something that's a little bit more over the top. The Porsche is definitely not going to do that. This is a little bit more of an understated, classy appearance. 
Now at the rear of the Macan, you can see this is the pre-refreshed model. For 2019, Porsche has kind of extended the taillights to go across and connect the two taillights together, kind of similar to what they've shown on the new 911 or the 718 Cayman and Boxster. Uh, now you can see it, have, it definitely has a very more traditional hatchback look. This is considerably lower than most of the competition, including the Audi Q5, but my tester has an air suspension, which you can raise the ground clearance from either seven inches to nine inches, depending on whatever you guys uh, decide to do with the actual settings of the air suspension. Now you can see in typical Porsche fashion, they spell out Porsche back here, although there's no crescent badge on the back here, which surprised me. And then down here, uh, this Sport Edition model does come standard with the Sport Exhaust. That's usually a typically a pricey $3,000 option. I'll let you guys hear what this engine sounds like real quick. And while the engine does sound pretty good, it's a four cylinder, two liter turbo, the same motor out of the Audi. So I'm not entirely sure it sounds meaty enough. It sounds Porsche enough for me, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that. The rest of the rear profile is very traditional. You have full LED tail lights here uh, with an LED turn signal, LED brake lights. Uh, it overall looks very expensive in typical Porsche fashion. Now, if you guys are looking to open the tailgate, there's no release down here. Instead, they kind of cleverly put it right here under the windshield wiper and a power rear lift gate is actually standard equipment which is great uh, and this is kind of where the macan falls short a lot of the competition at 17.8 cubic feet of overall cargo space this is considerably less than what you're going to get in the competition like uh, an audi q5 or a volvo xc60 or a bmw x3 fold down those rear seats and you're going to get roughly around 53 cubic feet of space that's trailing the competition by about 10 cubic feet so keep that in mind that the space back here is not great underneath this floor porsche actually gives you a temporary spare tire so you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit so while the outside of the Macan isn't really anything too special to look at, let's take a look at the inside and see how this SUV looks. Now, first things first, here's the key fob for the vehicle. This is the same traditional Porsche key fob that looks a little bit like a car. Because it's an SUV, there's like a, a missing button here, but you do have a power lift gate. My tester does have the Porsche entry and drive option. So basically it's the intelligent access key. This is optional. Um, this key comes standard, but if you guys don't get that option, you won't be able to just come up to the door handle over here and just touch this little area where it'll lock the door for you. And then when you want to unlock it, just touch the back of the handle and that will unlock the door for you. Now, looking at the interior of my tester, it's definitely a little bit on the boring side. It's black on black. Remember, this is a loaner vehicle while my Cayman is in uh, service here for its first service. Now, this one having the premium plus package has the optional 14-way power seats with two, well, I'm sorry, with two-person memory. Um, the seats themselves are really comfortable and supportive. They're also heated and cooled, which is nice. Massaging seats are not available. Um, they just really hug you. The bolts are good. The steering wheel is also uh, a nice fat steering wheel with the steering wheel audio controls, which is again optional. And then when you look at the door panels here, you can see there's some piano black plastic trim and some leather stitching. My sister also has the Bose audio that's included with this sport edition model. Now getting into the interior, you can see it's got a traditional SUV step in height, which is really weird to me because this is a Porsche, but it sits up high like an SUV. And I apologize for the rain. It's been raining all day today, shutting the door. It sounds okay. I'm trying to figure out if it sounds different than an Audi Q5 or the SQ5, but it sounds relatively solid. I expected it to sound a little bit more solid. There's a little bit of a, a vibration when I shut the door. Now, in typical Porsche fashion, when you got the Porsche entry and drive to start it, there's no button here to start the engine. Instead, look over to the left here. There's this little twist key thing here that you just have to turn with your foot on the brake and start the engine normally. Now you can see the gauges here are nothing really too special to look at. They're a little bit on the plain side, if you're asking me. Uh, and the engine, this is the two liter turbo four cylinder from the Q5. It has rather unremarkable noises. That was with the engine in sport or in normal mode. I'll put it into sport plus here. And you can hear it's got that active exhaust. It definitely lets the engine rev up high, but it doesn't really sound too Porsche-like in my opinion. But we'll go into the test drive later on and we'll see if that really makes a difference. Now you can see Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard on this Sport Edition model. That's typically an a la carte option for $400 or you have to go for this Porsche Connect Plus package that my tester doesn't have, but it does have the Apple CarPlay, which is nice. The interior you can see is basically a sea of buttons. My God, if you guys don't like buttons, you won't like this interior one bit. Porsche has kind of replaced 
replace this panel here of buttons with touch sensitive panels on the new Panamera and the new Cayenne, I believe. So they're kind of getting rid of this, but my God, this is serious button overload. If you have a button fetish, this is the brand to get. I just don't remember my Cayman having this many, or doesn't look quite this um, confusing in terms of button because this center console is much larger. Now, looking at the rest of this interior, you can see the dash is all this soft touch grained injection molded plastic. There's some piano black plastic trim with some genuine aluminum here. Now keep in mind, my tester is missing the full interior upgrade package um, that would basically wrap everything in leather. So instead you just have soft touch plastic here. That's six grand if you guys wanna wrap everything in leather here, but it'll give you other interior colors besides black and gray. So you can get something like red or beige or brown and whatnot. So this setup is fine, but just keep in mind, this doesn't really have that full on luxury look. You need to spend some money to get the really nice interior. Now this infotainment system, this is the Porsche Connect seven inch display. It looks small really small, but I love the Apple CarPlay, which is good. You can see it's got the Waze integration, which is really nice. This is what uh, most people are going to use when they use their phone GPS. Uh, going back to the Porsche Connect head unit here, you can see there's your usual sources. You can change that out. You can also go to uh, the actual navigation function which if you go here to map, this is the Porsche um, navigation system. It's part of an option that's on most of the models. It's standard on this uh, Sport Edition model. You can see here, the resolution is fine. It's relatively quick. It's just nothing super special. This is nothing as nice looking as Audi's MMI interface, although it's got some characteristics of the Google Earth display, which is nice. And if you'd like, you can also put the navigation in this little display here, because these gauges are definitely plain. They're identical to my Cayman, um, but um, some of the newer Porsches have an all LCD display that's kind of replacing these uh, analog ones. So just keep that in mind, this is the older system. Now going over here to your um, presets, you can see this is the way it's laid out. It's very similar to the latest Volkswagen products that I've shown you. Porsche Connects kind of just a variation of that. Um, you can see here going to your car information, you can see your trip and fuel economy information, your status display. Uh, going to home over here will show all your different icons. It's relatively easy to navigate just a little bit plain Jane, especially for a luxury brand. It's fine, it has all the usual stuff, but it's not gonna wow you. Keep in mind that the 2019 model has a bigger 11.9 or 10.9 inch display, replacing this tiny seven inch display. So that's what you're gonna get if you guys go for the 2019 model. If you fold this down, you can see there's still actually a CD slot. You have a SIM card reader and an SD1 and SD2 reader, probably for the GPS function. This controls the seven speed PDK transmission. You put the vehicle into reverse. You do have a backup camera with decent resolution. It has parking sensors front and rear. It has trajectory. A 360 camera is part, like a, part of a $1,500 option a la carte if you guys want the 360 camera option, which is definitely a great option to have. Down here, you can see climate controls. You actually have climate for or temperature settings for the driver, for the passenger. All the buttons are kind of laid down here. You have heated and cooled seats. Porsche is one of the few brands that let you turn both on at the same time, which is definitely nice. You have your um, drive mode selector here. You can see there's a sport, sport plus. That turns on your bumpy suspension mode, air suspension where you can lower the vehicle, your stability control. There's an off-road mode, which will raise the vehicle up if you guys use that mode. And then there's your lane departure, uh, lane change alert, which my tester has as an option. And then you can put on the sport exhaust there along with turning off the start stop. Surprise, there's still like three empty buttons over here. My tester has like a smoker's package here. It gives you a little ashtray over there, which is interesting. And then you have an electronic parking brake here, two cup holders over here. And then this is slightly padded um, with a small amount of storage down there. Your USB is actually in there. Uh, and then the seats, as I said before, are comfortable. They're supportive. Uh, just know that Porsche does offer an upgraded seat if you guys prefer something other than black. The glove compartment here is actually big. It's lined with felt and it's damp, so I love seeing such a large glove compartment. And then above you, this panoramic sunroof is standard on my tester, which is good because usually it's an option. This is kind of standard. It's kind of the standard fare that you get in the Audi Q5. Let's in a lot of light. There's also a power retractable sunshade if you don't want all this light. But overall, the interior, while it is definitely unique, it's not, you're not gonna confuse it for an Audi whatsoever, aside from a couple of switchgear parts that are shared. Um, the steering wheel I really like because it's a power tilt telescoping unit. It's got paddles on the wheel. And then these audio controls are uh, an extra. And then if you push this button right here, it turns on the heated steering wheel, which is again, an extra part of getting these audio package upgrades. Now, the buttons are definitely crazy. The quality feel is here, but I highly recommend spending that six grand to get the full on leather option. It's just something that you're gonna enjoy more and more when you drive your Porsche SUV every day. Now getting into the back seat of the Macan, you can see the legroom back here is also 
definitely trailing the competition. I couldn't find any actual numbers, but this is a little bit less than what I got in the uh, Audi SQ5, the sister vehicle that I was testing a couple months ago. I'd probably say the legroom is around the 35 inch mark. There's a big hump here that takes up your space in the center passenger. Uh, for the center passenger, but you can see nice fold down armrest. The seat itself, the leather feels pretty high quality considering this is the standard interior. You have rear seat vents, you have your own set of climate controls back here, and you have uh, two, three level heated rear seats, which is definitely nice, along with the big panoramic sunroof that kind of adds a lot more natural light. Now you can see the door panels are also um, soft touch. They're kind of that somewhat soft injection molded plastic, but overall, just keep in mind some of the competition like the Volvo, the BMW offers considerably more uh, rear legroom in the second row. So underneath the hood of the Macan, this stuff vehicle definitely looks interesting when you lift the hood because it actually covers up the headlights or the headlights kind of stay here and there's a big cutout for them. It just looks really strange. Now, underneath the hood, this is actually the first Porsche to get a four cylinder engine. Uh, it actually beat out the 718 Cayman and Boxster by a couple of years. This is the Volkswagen Group's corporate two liter turbocharged four cylinder, the same motor that's in like a GTI and an Audi A4, an Audi Q5. In the Porsche, it makes the same power, 252 horsepower and 270. 73 pound-feet of torque. Now those numbers are very competitive with the rest of the four-cylinder offerings in the segment. It's just not what I would call very Porsche-like. Now if you guys don't want a four-cylinder, keep in mind that there's also the Macan S, which has a three-liter turbocharged V6, the same motor that's in the Audi SQ5 that makes 340 horsepower. There's a GTS version of that motor that has 360 horsepower. And then you can go up to the turbo and turbo with a performance package, which has 400 and 440 horsepower from a 3.6 liter twin turbo V6. So keep in mind, of course, there's plenty of options with Porsche. Now, all-wheel drive is going to be actually standard on every Macan, even this base model, and Porsche's seven-speed PDK, PDK transmission. Their dual-clutch transmission is also standard. Now, this vehicle weighs roughly around 3,900 pounds. It'll tow a maximum of 4,409 pounds, so that's actually very competitive. Towing numbers, way more than what you get in most of this segment, and fuel economy is actually not too hateful. It's rated at 20 in the city in this application and 25 on the highway. Just be prepared to put premium gas. It's definitely required. So my first time driving a Porsche SUV. This is definitely an interesting experience for me because I really don't have much experience with Porsches in general until I bought my Cayman. Uh, and driving this thing sitting up so high is just very strange. I mean, I've driven the Audi A Q5 and SQ5 so many times where this car definitely has a familiar feeling to the Q5 and the SQ5. Remember, these are on the same platform. However, Porsche tweaks it. They say they've made it a Porsche enough to justify that. Now let's go into Sport Plus here. Floor the accelerator, 252 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. Porsche says it'll get to 60 in 6.1 seconds with the Sport Chrono package. I have it in Sport Plus right now, and I'm definitely noticing that it is firm. Now, it's not super firm to the point where it's unbearably harsh and I can't daily drive this thing in Sport Plus. The only thing that's annoying to me is the transmission tends to just stay up in its higher gears, and when it's a four-cylinder like this, it's kind of droning a little bit and I don't particularly love the way it sounds either. It has the burbles from the exhaust. Remember, this one has the sport exhaust, it's standard. It's typically a $3,000 option. I just don't know if it's worth the money for the sport exhaust. It just, it still sounds a little weak to me. Now the PDK in this car is fabulous. I mean, the fact that it's the standard transmission, um, it shifts really quickly, not quite as aggressively harsh as the Porsche sports cars you're gonna get with this transmission. But again, it's been tuned differently. It does feel more aggressive than the last Audi Q5 that I drove, basically with the seven speed dual clutch, but it's not really called PDK in the Audi. Uh, and the Porsche, the, the paddles work really well. I love the way the paddles perform. And really the only, notice now the only thing you're going to notice that it, where it feels sporty is in the exhaust whenever you shift gears it has that nice burble noise that kind of sounds like a gti it literally sounds like a volkswagen gti and it also makes the same noise that the audi q5 makes now i apologize for the rain it's been disgusting and raining all day today here in the springtime in dc but uh, the Porsche definitely feels very much at home in this, in this SUV form. And the all-wheel drive is very secure feeling. Put the vehicle into its just normal setting here. It turns off the sport exhaust and we're just gonna start cruising here. And you can hear, it's very quiet in here. The exhaust noise goes away. There's very little road noise, very little wind noise. 
visibility in here is also good. The ride gets even softer when you have it into its normal setting. And this is where the car doesn't feel like a Porsche. I feel like I'm driving an Audi SUV, which, you know, if you guys like Audis, but you don't want to drive an Audi because everyone has an Audi, this is why you'd probably buy the Macan because it looks exactly like a Porsche. It has that Porsche look. It just doesn't really have the Porsche driving feel, at least not in this base form, but floor it here. Come on. Man, this thing screams. It really screams. <laughs> it really screams, but it feels sluggish. I really want to drive the S version or the GTS or the turbo. This thing feels heavy behind the wheel, which again, some of you may like that because it reminds you of a European car, a German car. It feels heavy, secure. The steering does feel Porsche-like in the sense that it's really sporty, it's very quick. The suspension stays nice and flat, but doesn't get overly harsh. The seats also hug you in place, although if you guys want even more levels of adjustability, Porsche offers an 18-way seat over the 14-way seats uh, in this particular one. But overall, yeah, it's a very pleasant driving vehicle that is definitely one of the sportiest entries in the segment. Oh, and what you just heard there, that strange, like, video game whirring noise, that was the lane departure alert that my tester has that doesn't actually actively steer you because I'm missing that option for it. Um, it's $700 extra. Again, the driver assistance in this car is kind of rudimentary. Porsche is not really known for that. They're known for actually driving their vehicles instead of them driving for you. Now, Porsche is all about handling, so taking this off-ramp here, this on-ramp, whatever, the steering is good stays nice and flat. This thing really feels like it can handle a lot. I would love to drive the turbo performance version because this uh, two liter turbo, while it does have a sufficient power for most, most Porsche owners are not going to per be particularly liking this. They're gonna want more power, but this car does have launch control. Let's try out the launch control real quick. Basically floor the accelerator and brake. Ooh. Harsh shifts when it's in launch mode right now. Interesting. The engine itself doesn't really enjoy being revved out. This reminds me of this corporate two liter Volkswagen four cylinder engine. The launch control is cool. I like how it will settle the revs at around 5,500 RPM and then dump the clutch. That's a very Porsche thing here. My Cayman does the exact same thing, just with less drama than the Cayman. Definitely doesn't have the, the meaty sound. So I highly recommend trying out the six cylinder, especially if you guys uh, can spend the $65,000 price that this one's asking. I mean, for about $10,000 more, you could get the six cylinder S and I'd have to drive the car to really find out. But if you're gonna spend 65, you might as well I'll add another 10 to get the full, uh, like a, even, you know, basically a second zero, zero to 60 quicker um, and just a much better sound versus this four cylinder. I'm a little disappointed with how weak it sounds, even with the sport exhaust. Now, because Porsche sells roughly three times as many Macans over their iconic 911 sports car, arguably you could say this is the more important vehicle in the Porsche lineup. So it's, in, it's crucial that Porsche kind of gets this right. I mean, at a starting price at under $50,000, this is the least expensive way you're going to get into a brand new Porsche, which again, $50,000 is still a lot of money. But the, at the beginning of this video, I asked the question, does this car still feel like a Porsche or is there too much Audi DNA? Well, after spending the day driving the Macan Sport Edition, which is essentially the base model with the two liter four cylinder, I'm happy to report that it does have some essence of Porsche in here from the way it handles to the way uh, the transmission shifts to the responsiveness of the engine. Unfortunately, the sound is a little bit more like a Volkswagen GTI or a Golf R for something like that, which is, sounds good. I just don't know if it's going to actually please the Porsche faithful. Thankfully though, it's easy to daily drive this thing. It has a comfortable ride quality that's firm yet still compliant. It's got an interior that is, while, while it is cramped, the front seats are comfortable, there's good enough space, and there's a decent amount of cargo space if you guys don't plan on actually putting large adults in the back or maybe even a car seat. And overall, um, the look of the car, I think, is actually good. I'm not entirely sure if I preferred the look of the 2019 model with its taillights that have been kind of extended, but the interior of this one, while it is a little bit more on the basic side, considering the fact that this is a little bit more of a less expensive Porsche, it's a little bit more ac acceptable. Just keep that in mind when you guys are looking at a Porsche. These things get damn expensive when you start adding some options to it. Now, speaking of which, how much does this ex that exact one cost? Now, I mentioned earlier, uh, a base Macan starts at around $47,800 plus the destination, and that's for literally a basic model. This one having the sport, uh, the sport packages and whatnot, the sport edition includes things like the sport chrono package, the adaptive variable air suspension package, 
uh, the upgraded infotainment system with the Bose Audio and the navigation system. This one also has the premium plus package that includes the Porsche entry and drive and then the infotainment system and then the heated and cooled seats. This one has its sit stickers for around $65,900, which makes this car roughly about $8,000 more expensive than a comparably equipped Audi Q5. Is it worth the extra money? On the lower end, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, sure, I like the design of this more. I think it drives a little bit better but you really need to go to the higher end of the Porsche Spectrum, which is gonna cost a little over $80,000 to really get that full-on Porsche experience. But if you guys want a, a, the least expensive way to get into a Porsche, this is definitely the vehicle that's going to do it. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Porsche Macan Sport Edition. If you're also looking to see those cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you.